have Rudy Brixa, who is 6-0 on black-white angel control, playing against Harlan Fear, who is 5-1 with Band Company. The one good thing about the Band Company deck, when it doesn't have a 2-drop, a lot of times it can catch right back up with either reflecting ma Reflector Mage or uh, Collected Company. Well, Harlan's going to lead off with a Yevamaya Coast and a Plains, and he does have a 2-drop in Selfless Spirit. Rudy has a Shambling Vent and a Caves of Coleos, and he's just going to pass the turn back. And Selfless Spirit does a lot of work in tandem with uh, Spell Queller, making sure that you don't lose it. And just having a, a two-power flyer is kind of nice on turn two. Harlan's going to attack in with his Spell Queller, or with his Selfless Spirit. Rudy's going to take a point of damage to Grasp of, Grasp of Darkness it. Harlan has a Sylvan Advocate and a tapped Canopy Vista. They're just going to pass the turn back to Rudy. Rudy has a tapped uh, Shambling Vents, and they're just going to pass the turn back to Harlan. So both players are going back and forth here. Got some removal spells. Rudy's going to take two damage from the Sylvan Advocate and fall down to 17. Harlan's just going to play a Selfless Spirit and pass the turn back to Rudy, who's going to use another Grasp of Darkness and take care of the Spirit, but he will lose a point of life in the meantime. Oh, he's going to take care of the Advocate, and here we have a Liliana on turn four and a plus one to kill that Selfless Spirit. Rudy's sitting pretty, although Harlan did just finally hit his fourth land, so I have to think that there's going to be quite a few collected companies coming his way. Yeah, and I believe the reason that Rudy took the two damage from the Sylvan Advocate and then grasped, grasped it end of turn is because he was worried about something that would generate more value, like a Tireless Tracker or a Duskwatch Recruiter. Well, a collected company from Harlan on Rudy's end step is going to find a Sylvan Advocate and a Nyssa Vastwood Seer. That's going to go get a Forest. That's very good news for Harlan since he was short on mana anyways. Rudy does have five lands untapped, though. Yeah, he probably doesn't have two instant speed removal spells, so I could see a... Uh, oh, wow, that's good. All right, so Rudy's going to try and use an ultimate price on that uh, Sylvan Advocate. Harlan has an Archangel Avacyn to save it, though. Murder's going to get rid of the Nyssa. Liliana's going to lose two. So it depends... Okay. I was going to say, it looked like Rudy... So so often people say, with the indestructible trigger on the stack, and then they kill something, you always have to be careful about your phrasing, because if you do it that way, that means the Avacyn sees the creature in play before it dies. Ooh, and Harlan found his sixth land here, and that's going to make his Advocate a 4-5. But it does have minus two from the Nyssa. Yep. And that is an altered Soren, I believe. We have a Soren Grim Nemesis. It's going to plus. It's going to get... Another land here. And I think Harlan's just going to, yeah, give a plus, a plus one counter to this Sylvan Advocate just so it can kill the Liliana. And what's nice about this is he's got another uh, Jermokas command so that if Rudy tries to kill the Sylvan Advocate for Xaxes with the Sorin, Harlan might actually be able to essentially counter that with the Jermokas command. It's always nice when you can find a way to get value out of your Jermokas commands yeah. in these matchups because it's... Here we have a duress from Rudy. <laughs> Harlan's going to use two Dramokas commands, and that's going to supersize this advocate. It's now going to be a 7 8. Yeah. Can't be killed by uh, Soren. Rudy is going to plus one and get a transform card. He's got quite a few in his deck, so we're going to wait for the actual copy once we actually see what it is. It looks like it is a Bruna. And there are no angels to get out of the graveyard yet, so... Rudy's just going to play a Kalidus. Advocate's going to attack Soren down to one. Soren's going to plus. And I really like, you know, having more... I, I don't want to harp on it too much, but I really like Harlan having more two drops in the form of Duskwatch Recruiter because it makes it so that you can come out of the gates quickly, but it also helps in these sorts of situations, making it so you don't flood out. All right, well, that Advocate's just going to keep crashing in. Rudy did activate a Shambling Vent to chump that turn, gain a couple of life. He still has that Kalidus. He doesn't want to quite cash it in yet. Uh, his plus one on the Soren found him another Transform card which is going to be Gisela. So that's going to deal four damage to Harland and make a 4-3 flying first strike. Yeah, and it's going to be able to meld with Bruna potentially on the following turn. Well, there's a Reflector Mage for Harland, so that is some good news. 
Yeah, that'll buy a little time, but not that much. All right, Reflector Mage is going to bounce back. Urgezella. Shamley Vent is going to chump that Reflector, or the Sylvan Advocate yet again. Soren's going to plus. That's going to find a Languish. Get four more damage. Harlan's Arl down to four yeah. from these Soren activations. Soren's been doing a lot of work. Well, when you're flipping cards like Bruna, you know, it doesn't take long. Yeah. So two Languishes are going to take care of everything. And I believe Rudy will get one zombie. Uh, well, he'll get a zombie and then lose it when he languishes the second oh, time yeah, that's to right. kill the Sylvan Advocate. But having Bruna, Giselda in hand and an active Soren, uh, Harlan just drew, you know, 14 too many lands and is yeah. going to scoop things up. So Rudy's going to take game one here with Black White Angel Control. Let's look at his sideboard. He's got one Anguished Unmaking, one Felidar Cub, one Tragic Arrogance, two Planar Outburst, one Hallowed Moonlight, a Guilt Leaf Winnower. People are catching on. <laughs> we got one Bruna the Fading Light, three Transgress the Mine, two Deadweight, one Liliana the Last Hope, and one Emrakul the Promised End. Uh, how do we think he's going to sideboard here? I don't think that he needs to bring in the Emrakul, but I think he's going to want to bring in a lot of his other five mana spells. Uh, the Tragic Arrogances, Planar Outbursts are going to be quite good. Guilt Leaf Winnower I think is going to be worth bringing in. And uh, Highland Moonlight is obviously something that is tailored for this matchup. Uh, so let's take a look at Harlan's sideboard. We got four Lamholt Pacifist, three Negate, two Archangel Abyssin, two Tireless Tracker, two Ojatai's Command, two Tragic Arrogance. What do we think he's bringing in? So the cards that I like are uh, the Negates, the Abyssins, and the Ojatai's Commands. He can also consider Tireless Tracker, depending on how slow he wants to be. There's an outside chance that he could make use of Tragic Arrogance. I don't really like it in the matchup, but it does have situations where it can be quite powerful. And so just having a, a miser tragic arrogance may be something worth doing. It's probably a little more likely that he'll want that on the draw rather than the play, because it's pretty counter synergistic to play a sweeper with his game plan. I can get down with that. Yeah. But the I, hear, uh, I, I, I jive what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now, both of these players are hardened SCG stalwarts. We can, oh yeah, see, Har we can see Harlan Fair there is 11th on our player of the year leaderboard. And if you want to check out any of their previous feature matches, do you know where you can do that? How would you tell me? On our YouTube channel Ooh. with the ver with the premium or the SCG Tour archives. So uh, versus series, premium archives, SCG Tour archives, unboxings, and more. I've even done some unboxings. You can check mm. those out there. Absolutely free. YouTube.com slash Star City Games to subscribe. You get notifications when new videos get posted. Now, while these players finish up shuffling, let's learn a little bit more about Rudy Brixa. He is 27 from Baltimore, Maryland. He has eight open top eights with two wins. He has a martial artist background with purple belt in several disciplines. He played soccer in high school, and he's a tattoo enthusiast. Yeah, pretty, pretty sweet, uh, you know, set of interests. He also made the 2015 Players' Championship. Jeez, so. what a baller. So he grinded hard. Yeah. Got yeah, his he's points, a hard-working man. Got his points and was able to make it into that championship. And I'm, I'm interested to see, I'm interested that he's championing this Black White Angel deck. So there are a lot of, you know, known players, players through social media that do content that uh, have been talking about, you know, most of the decks in the format. Most people are on Bank Company talking about green-white tokens. Mm -hmm. Not many people have jumped onto this Black White Angel deck. Uh, and Rudy seems to think it's very good. And he's 6-0 and up a game in this match. Yeah. Uh, my complaint of the deck when I look at the deck list, I haven't played it, but my complaint when I look at the deck list is it just looks really clunky. It's got a lot of expensive stuff. Uh, but if it's not so slow that the Bant Company deck can't actually punish it, then it's probably a great deck. All right, well, it looks like both of our players are mulliganing to six. One thing that's nice about the Black White Angel deck as opposed to the Black White uh, control deck that we traditionally see that's mono removal plus some planeswalkers is the uh, traditional black white control decks that are more redundant on the spot removal but that means that they're a little more likely to flood out and because they have so few creatures they need to kill everything mm -hmm. the nice thing about the way that this deck works out is is it's not quite as redundant on the early removal spells but it has a lot more card advantage because it has all of these powerful creatures that can generate value. And also, uh, 
because it has these powerful creatures, that means that it doesn't actually need to kill everything that the opponent's doing. Uh, it also doesn't give the opponent as much time. A lot of times this banned company deck, when it's up against a control deck, it'll have all of its stuff die, and then it'll play Duskwatch Recruiter with a bunch of mana open and activate it a bunch of times, mm -hmm. draw some cards. You know, if you're getting bashed in the face by a Gisela, uh you may not have time to play things um, that slowly so, to try to milk maximum value out of your Duskwatch Recruiters and whatnot. So... Um, I think those are some of the advantages of this black-white angel control deck. Well, it looks like both players are going to mulligan to five. So while we have a couple minutes here, let's learn a little bit more about Harlan Fear. You may not recognize him there from his picture because he did recently cut his hair and donate it uh, like he normally does. But he is 21 from Charlottesville, Virginia and part of Team Next Rich Games, which is a uh, team based out of North Florida. Uh, he has three open top eights with one win. Uh, primarily those are with Jeskai decks or Eldrazi mm -hmm. Aggro decks. Yeah, he's Legacy. very good with those kind of decks. Uh, he donates his hair after it reaches a certain length. He is a former wrestler in high school and a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Don't you worry, Harland. I will not hold that against you. <laughs> and he is part of the other NRG team. Yeah, that's so weird. Mm -hmm. So Next Rich Games, Nerd Range Games, it's all good. They're battling. Yep. Let's see. Harlan does not look happy about this five, though. Yeah. Do we have one land, maybe no land? Are we going? Oh, we're going to four. That's not where you want to be. Mulligan no, to no. four. Down a game. Down a game. He also got paired down. He's got no hair. Well, he got paired up. Rudy got paired. He's got, he's got a little bit of hair. <laughs> it's starting to grow back, but it, will. it grows he's real like fast. He's like Samson. You know, he's lost his power with his <laughs> hair gone. He should just go get uh, Tom Ross's leather jacket and wrap it around his yeah. head. <laughs> Could he ever lose then? There we go. I don't know. Rudy's going to go to 4 too. This is going to be a gentleman's a 4. A gentleman's 4. Yep. They, they will get to scry. Don't mm -hmm. forget that. Have you? Do you have any... You know, Andrew, Andrew Boswell, multi four, still win the match stories. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure uh, we actually talked about this on a on a different cast. But yeah, with Green White Aggro, where I just went, you know, experiment one, uh, Voice of Resurgence. My opponent like killed it with a Devour Flash or whatever, and then I had like a, a Loxodon Spider or something like that. <laughs> you know, and it was just per like you know. If you just have a really good start and you're an aggro deck, a lot of times the game ends before you or your opponent have cast all your all the cards in your hand. Um, and that was before you even got to scry. Yeah, that was. I, oh wait, are they are they gonna are they gonna draw this game and start over? Well, it looks like they're both mulligan. A gentleman's three is a what we call three. it in Sugarloaf. Because so I believe they can both agree to draw this game and start over both at seven. So they are they are agreeing to draw this game, and they are both going to start over at seven. So the the match count is currently one o one in Rudy's favor. Yeah, and technically, I believe the way the rules work is a match is over once one person gets to two wins. Yes. So it's not like... You can have 100 draws. Right, yeah. It's not like Harlan's just going to try to win here and draw the match. But technically, uh, we're going to be going into game three here yep. um, with the uh, um, possibility of going to a game four. Correct. Or, or, he, or, or if they draw again. Or even more if five, they just yeah. mulligan down to oblivion. Yeah, we'll see how many you know times they all want to mulligan. Um, so yeah, I, we have so many <laughs> SCG live firsts. Yeah, how many? So many firsts. Magic is is a game with a lot of things going on. Is that is that something that you would do in the situation, or would you just be like, no, let's play with three cards? Oh yeah, I just play with three <laughs> cards. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Well, I I would say generally speaking, I play decks that would rather that be on three cards than both on seven. Well, or rather uh, both on three than yeah. both on seven. Yeah. All right. Well, they're gonna keep their seven for game three air quotes. Rudy's going to lead off with a swamp. Harlan has a tapped prairie stream. He's got a two drop. You know, you might as well just play ten two drops if you're always going to have one. Ah, so it looks like Harlan chose to be on the draw. That's why we see Rudy being on the play. So you got to make sure you hit those lands. Make sure you find those two drops. I do. I do like hitting the lands. I do like ensuring that I don't run out of gas. But, uh, you know, with cards like Spell Queller, 
and tireless tracker, it seems like there's there's such an ad, a real card advantage to being on the plane, having the initiative. So I'm a little surprised that Harlan is being on the draw. It's a pretty interesting decision. Uh, it certainly is a, a bold statement on his thoughts on the match. But, you know, we'll see how it works out for him. All right, well, Rudy is going to use an anguished on making to take care of that Sylvan Advocate. Harlan's going to fire off a Nyssa Vest with Seer and go get a Forest. Uh, Transgress the Mind is going to reveal three Forests, a Spell Queller, an Archangel Avison, and a, and a Collected Company. Rudy's going to take the Collected Company, of course. Yeah, and the main reason for that is because he can one-for-one one the other two cards. It's much more difficult for him to one-for-one one a hollowed or a uh, collector company. He needs something like Hollowed Moonlight or Languish, which is a lot more specific. So Rudy missed his fourth land drop, which will allow Harlan to play his fourth land drop, but now he finds it. Now let's see what we do next. Now, what Harlan's supposed to do here is just draw a collected company off the top. <laughs> Well, Rudy's going to play his Kalidus that is going to be countered and by Harlan Spellcaller. And Harlan did draw a collected company off the top. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to crash in four points of damage. That's going to drop Rudy down to 11. He did draw that collected company. And Rudy has a hollowed moonlight. All right, so we've got a guilt leaf winnower here that Rudy might end up using. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows that Harlan has an Avacyn, though. Yeah, so and winnower does destroy. Yeah. So Rudy may just wait for Harlan to cast the Abyssin and then play the Winnower. Um, but things may line up even worse for Harlan if he goes for the Collected Company here instead, saving that indestructible trigger for later use. Wow, and Rudy's just going to force it. So Rudy's going to play the Winnower. So this is a little interesting. I guess... I think the, the reasoning here on Rudy's part is he just wants to use his mana. If he doesn't do this winner, he doesn't have a very good play. And, uh, you know, well, one of the easiest ways to fall behind is to just... Well, it looks like he does have Murder and Hallowed, or Hallowed Moonlight. So mm -hmm. he does have a way to interact with things that Harlan might have. This does force the hand on the Archangel Avison, though. Yep. Just going to attack with everything. And this is a l little interesting. Um, this will flip the Avacyn, which will kill the Winnower, which is nice, but will also kill the Spell Queller. Yeah. Um, it does push a lot of damage. It's going to knock Rudy all the way down to two um, if the Avacyn had flipped. So Rudy's going to murder the Avacyn. Attack with the Winnower. And Hollowed Moonlight is back-breaking here. Moonlight's going to counter, effectively counter the Collected Company. Harlan will just look at his top six and put the rest at the bottom. Rudy really needs to get rid of that Queller so that he can start attacking, uh, gaining life with the Kalidas. Mm -hmm. And I like just firing off the Reflector Mage here. Uh, Harlan is completely flooded out and knows that if Rudy draws a Languish, there's no way Harlan's going to win anyway. So, All right, well, Ruinous Path is going to take care of the Spellqueller. It's going to get back a Kalidus. Rudy has a tap land and passing. Now that Winnower is going to be free to kill that Reflector Mage next turn and get a zombie. This is going to really turn around for Rudy Brixa if Harlan happens to yep. brick any more than he already has. Mm -hmm. Man, that Hallowed Moonlight was real backbreaking. Yeah, and that is a one of out of the sideboard, I believe. Um, Oh, no, he has one more in the main deck, so. So I think this black-white angel deck is actually set up pretty well against the Bank Company deck. It's certainly made some some very real concessions to the matchup. I mean, the fact that it's main decking a Hollow Moonlight is kind of a, a big deal. Well, Kalidus is going to crash in, bring Rudy up to 6. Harlan's going to fall down to 13. Gilleaf Winnower is going to be cast again and kill that Reflector Mage, uh, which is going to bring about a zombie. Food for Kalidas. Got a Sylvan Advocate for Harlan. Just a couple of lands. He does have an Ojitai's Command, though. Yeah, Rudy has just a ton of stuff, though. Although, if Rudy just happens to play Soren here instead of a creature, that's going to allow him to kill the Advocate, keep his Soren around, make another zombie, gain a bunch of life, attack for a whole bunch. Yep. 
And it looked like Rudy just oh, he's gonna minus go for the full six. six to play around Dramoka's command. Exactly. Very smart move. He got kind of blown out by it last time. Or I don't think he actually did, but he saw that the play was, was, was available because mm -hmm. he had to rest first. All right, so we're just going to attack for a bunch. Ojitai's command is going to be cast. That's going to gain four life for Harlan and draw a card. That's going to bring him up to eight. Rudy is back up to 15. And this is going to be tough for Harlan because it's not like he just has to run Rudy out of removal spells. These threats on the board are clocking Harlan. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, so geez. his company is going to have six <laughs> lands on top. That is just not, not Harlan's round. Oh, Harlan's going to extend the hand there. Rudy is going to win that match 2-0-1 yep. over Harlan. A rare, a rare way to win a match. And move on to 7-0. Harlan's going to fall to 5-2. and two. Still, still live for day two. Um, I, will, I will not count Harlan out until everything is all oh, said no, and done. He's a